Hey everybody, welcome to another Rider Club Radio with your hosts Jeff and Liam. As always, as usual. And uh, this week, a little bit of news, a little primer before the episode. Neither of us have watched the Juoju movie yet, and because our episodes are so completely cram packed right now, uh, we're we can't clock in under an hour anymore because we're covering <laughs> so much content. Well, it doesn't it, I mean it, it's not like we have to clock in under an hour. We haven't actually clocked in Dude, under an hour in a fucking year, but like. The, the regulations clearly state that's true the contract says for every we, second you go over an hour it's one lash and my back cannot take it anymore <laughs> i'll tell you that much it's just we're watching three shows and one of which we watched three episodes of but Fize is almost done so when Fize is done uh we're gonna watch the georgia movie and we'll yeah. we'll tell you what to think about it like i'm really <laughs> yeah we'll tell you what to think about it <laughs> Uh, like I'm really psyched to watch that movie because it looks amazing, but look I'm so I'm going to hold off. I might I might watch it anyways, and then just save my thoughts. Yeah, I guess that's true, and I, we good. could always rewatch it later or whatever. It's just right now, like it was like you were we were talking about this earlier. Like we just take a, a fucking day out of our week where it's like okay, two three hours of this day just watching <laughs> Toku. <laughs> Yeah, and I love Toku, but I'm the type of person that watches it slowly, not like Liam slowly, <laughs> but like normal person slowly, where I watch like maybe two episodes of Toku a week. Yeah, I can't shotgun shows. I can't do that. God, you can't even musket ball shows. <laughs> but anyway, this week we watched Common Rider X8 episode 28, Common Rider Amazons episode 16, and Common Rider Fies episodes 40, 41, and 42. Whew! <laughs> you got them all right. Yeah. Uh, Liam, mm-hmm. why don't you drag your sick ass out of the emergency room where you've okay. been staying? Okay. And tell us what happened on x this week. Okay. While I try really hard not to fall asleep. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I am recording from... The CR, because I am ill this week, but I <laughs> I came to you to do He's this episode. He's got the game illness. I got the game sickness. This helps my stress, so I'm here. Rider um, Club Radio is the main stressor in his life. <laughs> you know, who do you think Jeff is? He's my fucking bugster. <laughs> so, <laughs> so as we saw no, last No episode, bugster has ever laughed like that. I don't know why I did that. There should be one. There should be one. Fucking generic cackling villain bugster. I mean, I'm surprised Alumbra hasn't, or, or Fat Dan never... Oh, well. Fat... Anyway, what happened on this week's episode? Fat Dan was not in it, by the way. That's true. That's a point against it. So this week, um, Emu surmises that since Poppy was Poppy was happy that everything turned out okay last week, so he said, okay, th- she's got to be good, right? There's got to be some good left in her. We're going to have to figure this out. But it's too late because a uh, couple Bugsters appear, Salty and Alambra appear, and they go to fight them, and Poppy intervenes. Poppy again says, hey, you're not allowed to fight the Bugsters, you're, you're supposed to help them to kill the characters. She whoops everybody's ass, but Emu uh, uses maximum, maximum, max, die maximum, and rewrites her DNA to make her good again. It, Which is like... Kind of cheap. It's uh, this. Ep- mm, I'm gonna talk about cheapness this episode. I was thinking about it's, this all day it's today. Cheap as fuck, man. Not just this, but yeah, he che- yeah. He, he erases her, and she says, "Oh gosh, ooh." She's like chaser. Everyone's trying to program her to be whatever. Uh, so yeah, he erases her, makes her good again. She says, "Guys, this feels weird. I'm I'm good, but I don't know." Uh, Pallet is so pissed off about this. He takes her and teleports her back to base. And he tells her, hey, look, Poppy, you gotta kill humans, right? You, you're a bugster. You were born by killing a human. So, you, I mean, in for a penny, she's in for a like, pound. She's like, what? What did I do? What did I do? What did I do? He's like, yeah, all bugsters kill people. You're not an exception. You stole someone's life. So it's there's no going back for you. So she's, she's depressed about this. She hates herself. And she uh, goes to a, to watch Team Baron do a dance in the park. <laughs> she wants to clear her head. So she goes and watches a little dance troupe doing a dance in the park. And uh, some, some players catch her. They're like, it's, it's Poppy, let's kick her ass. And she's like, no, I don't want to hurt people. And they're like, no, fuck you, we ate you, you're a bugster. 
the the they they start kick there's a patient in this episode in the CR. He doesn't do shit though. He just lays there. He's like, "Doc, you got to defeat Poppy." And, I fucking hate Poppy. Oh, it's And the- Emma's like, "No, I love Poppy." And he's like, "What? What? She's a you, bugger." You what, mate? He's he's there to illustrate that all the players hate Poppy and Poppy is is conflicted whether she should side with humans because humans hate her because she's a bugster. So yeah, here's that- here's the problem with that. I know we're not supposed to be discussing until the fucking description's nah, over. Uh, fuck it, this but isn't an ironclad. When, you, when you murder people, they're probably not gonna like you very much. <laughs> I mean, you think? It, maybe it's unfair. Maybe oh, it's no. unfair judgment or whatever. She but you was, were just trying to murder that man earlier in the fucking episode. She was brainwashed, so. I like the guy's, uh, his, his, he wears like a military fatigues and everything. He's like, God, I played Kamen Rider Chronicle because I love survival games. And, like, I feel like he's he's playing, like, the long dark or whatever on his computer. And he's like, yeah, this game where I can actually fucking die in real life is probably... It's like the ultimate survival game. I'll get that shit. He's he's a real hardcore dude. Yeah. He's a real hardcore idiot. That's true. Every, all That's the, the thing players, about all the ride players I is that them. they're all fucking redeemable shitheads. I, like, I love that, though. Because <laughs> they're all just goofballs. So they're, they just think it's a video game. So they treat it like a video game. They're idiots. I quite, I quite like that. I would be a ride player. Oh yeah, I would be just as dumb as the rest. I'd be like, oh, dude, there's a special player, kind of rider. I'm gonna attack him. I I'm got sure like I'll a fucking fun. knife. My got, weapon's yeah. a knife. I got a brown wooden gun. This should be fine <laughs> against that man who's a human battleship. It looks like a fucking like like a a revolver from like like no, it looks like a fucking flintlock pistol from the seventeen hundreds. <laughs> it's the Billy the Kid gun from Ghosts. They had it left over, they just fucking take it. And their weapons are like flopping around because they're made out of cardboard and they're like, I'm gonna <laughs> attack this fucking giant monster. <laughs> the worst thing about Comrade Chronicle is you can't grind on bugsters to get better gear, like the weak bugsters that you can actually beat. You can't beat them and get better gear. And uh, even when you beat boss bugsters, you don't get better gear. You get these worthless Gasha trophies. How the fuck are you supposed to level up in this game? You level up by attacking named characters, NPCs. You can never beat them. Just They're steal like them. Just run up and grab them. them. I guess you could do it. That There's, worked. There is one named character who is 98 levels ahead of you at the start. <laughs> what are you supposed to do there? You fucking you run up and grab his shit and yank it off of him. That's true. It worked perfectly. This game is bullshit. It really... It's a terrible game. I would return <laughs> it within two hours to Steam and get my fucking refund. That's true. That's true. So, fucking, where were we? So everyone's attacking Poppy. All these idiot ride players are attacking Poppy. And, and Tyga shows up with Spencer's gifts, and they fucking attack Poppy. Because she's a bugster, and they hate... I want to... He's got to beat Kamen Rider Chronicle so he can get a chance at... Uh, he can get a shot at Graphite. So he he's he's fighting he's he, that two of them are fighting Poppy, and then of course since it's Exade the whole gang appears Exade and Brave yeah. both also appear. Graphite and, apparently forgets his own plan in this episode because he's like I'm gonna go fucking fight him right now and Parrot's <laughs> like uh didn't you have like a plan or something to like force Tyga to play the game? Uh, oh yeah shit. Uh, Graphite's like oh yeah I knew that I was just joking. <laughs> just, I was just want to see you knew. Um, they all have a big fight. And Emu convinces Poppy, he says, he, Poppy, like, doesn't know, she's confused, she's, she doesn't know if she wants to be good. Yeah, she's not fighting back, everybody's just, like, wrecking her shit. Yeah. And she's, like, going, no, please! And all of our heroes are just beating this little girl up. Common Rider, everyone, the hero of justice. <laughs> They're just, like, wailing on her, and she's like, please, no, Nico chan no! <laughs> And Nico's like, you fucking dirty bugster. I apparently hate bugsters a lot now. Fuck you. And Snipe rubbing off on her. I so guess. she untransforms. And she's like, I don't know if I'm evil or not. And Emu takes her gun and points it at himself. And he's like, if you're evil, fucking kill me. Fucking shoot me right now. Blow my fucking brains out. Make my goddamn day. I swear to God. And, and Poppy's everybody's like, like whoa. <laughs> Bobby's like, Jesus Christ, no. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Everybody slowly backs away like, whoa, I didn't know it was going to go here. <laughs> Poppy throws, we joke about shit like that, but that actually happens in this episode. Yeah. Uh, Poppy Poppy uh, smiles because she's so happy about Emu believing in her. Emu says, I know you're good because you wouldn't shoot me. And Poppy smiles, 
And I guess that means the game is cleared, which cures everyone's game sickness that was infected yeah. by Poppy. They and literally say, like, how was the game cleared? And Tyga says, Maybe it's because Poppy smiled. And I was like, you know, I'm pretty sure that's not the fucking point of the game she's in. <laughs> it's dancing. Um, after that, Pallad... Pallad was there the whole time. He just doesn't really do much. He's he's still there, and he's like... No, Ooh. Parrot is in this whole episode, Parrot, right? rather, yeah. And he is absolutely hilarious. Because yeah. he keeps trying to fight Maximum Gamer x aid and he can't hurt him whatsoever. He's like, pay attention to me. Play the game with me. <laughs> play, you play with Poppy. You don't play with well, me. Why won't you play with me? And it keeps like cutting to Brave, who's noticing this. Mm-hmm. And nobody else notices that like he's completely obsessed with Emma. Yeah. And uh, the reason is... Because yeah. at the, the, the underpass, at the end of the episode, Parrot reveals that he is Emma's bugster. He's dun dun dun! That doesn't make any sense. Dun, dun, wah, bah, bah, bah. Jeff, what did you think of *Common Rider X8* episode twenty-eight? You know, I might get a lot of flack for this, right? Okay. Uh, a lot Shoot of our it. listeners might be unhappy with my ruling on this episode. Okay. Uh, I thought this episode was so full of contrived, convenient plot elements. And, like, no real stakes whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, I really didn't like this episode. I, I I think I liked it. I think it was middle of the road. I think I liked it more than you. I think it was middle of the road for me, but I, I understand exactly like, what you mean. I'm not angry about it or anything. It's not like I watched an episode of Ghost and I'm pissed or whatever. Yeah. I just... Somebody pointed out in the comments of a YouTube video, and I really wish I remembered who it was. I always think I'm going to write it down, and I don't, because I'm an <laughs> asshole. No credit for you. But, uh... Your opinion's about to be stolen. They said, um, that he's just... Emu's just going to use his Maximum Gamer to rewrite Poppy and turn her good again, and I was like, fuck, you're right. But then I was like, in my heart of hearts, I was like, this show isn't that lazy, right? It'll actually have some sort of real plot behind it, right? Nope. Like, she'll she'll have to, like, like choose between... Like, she'll slowly regain her memories or whatever and have to choose between Bugster and Human. But no, she gets her fucking code rewritten to be her old self again, and she's just sad because people don't like her. So here's the thing. There's that, which sucks. But what yes. pissed me off more... Was later on in the, the the fucking episode when they make her smile and that cures everyone. That's fucking dumb. There was, like, I, I with the Juju Burger episode, I was fine, right? That episode was clearly an outlier. It wasn't. It didn't have shit to do with anything else. It was just an episode to promote some fucking McDonald's toys. And yes. he makes this burger appear and he dies later anyways. That's okay. I can, It sucks, it's dumb, but I can live with it. With this, it felt so cheap and, and so... Like, when it, it's it, like... They had, like, glimpses, right, of a really cool idea. Like, she's conflicted, right? Mm. Because she is a bugster and it's in her nature or whatever. But that's like being, like, I was I was born a southerner, so maybe I'll fucking, like, shoot guns and fly a rebel flag. I don't want to, but I was born a southerner, so I guess <laughs> I have to. That's complete fucking horse shit. Like, she was completely good before, but for some reason, like, I don't know, showing up and being like, I'm your navigator, if you don't, I'm gonna shoot you if you don't do the rules, and now she's like, fuck, maybe I'm evil. (laughs) God, it felt so good. Maybe I'm a bad person. They could have gone more into that, right? Like... They didn't even... I think they mentioned twice in the entire episode that she had to kill someone to... to be a bug, to be alive. Like she, it might have been reprogramming, but that's that's inner. Like that's just as valid as them programming her to be good. That could be an interesting angle with her character. Yeah, they don't but take they're that. not going to do that. No, of course not. They, they 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 it feels like there's going to be a tough choice at the end because she's infected so many people. So you got to kill her, right? But here's the thing: when you have a tough choice in fiction and then have an easy, simple solution where everybody wins, just sort of float along out of nowhere. It's not cool. If if Sophie's choice ended with yeah. Sophie tricking the Nazis into letting both of her kids live, it wouldn't be a good story. It's yeah, just only, dumb. There's no satisfaction for the audience whatsoever. You build up this huge problem that needs to have a solution, and then you're like, oh, wait, never mind, it's not a problem at all. Just kidding. I guess the thing is... 
maybe when you dance really good in Juju Burger or whatever game it is, uh, Don't Worry Me For Beat. Yeah. Like, the better you do, the more she smiles. So if you can make her smile, that means you beat the game. That's That was my fucking mental gymnastics that I used to justify this Garbo. But it's still dumb. It's still just as dumb. It's like... Uh, it's, uh, this episode wasn't terrible or anything, but it was just such a letdown. It was kind of a letdown, because Poppy... Like, you and I both loved her as the navigator. I kind of wish she had stuck in that role more. Yeah. Like, if that was status quo from here on for the next, I don't know, ten episodes or so, I would like that quite a bit. But they they undo it in the cheapest and easiest, most convenient way possible. I really didn't enjoy that. No, I didn't either. And there's there's something very satisfying about this, like, cute, silly side character becoming, like, a super powerful villain that yeah. nobody can stop. Yeah. That's really... There, a lot of stuff could have been done with that that would have been really great. And a lot of stuff could have been done with Poppy, like, struggling with the fact that she's, like, a bugster. And maybe, like, part of her wants to get revenge on humanity or something. Because they are subjugated or whatever. Mm-hmm. But there's absolutely no reason whatsoever she should be on the fence about it. And her reasoning for, like, oh, well, people are, like, afraid of bugsters. They hate bugsters. Well, bugsters are a fucking infectious disease. You've been trying to murder people. Of course they're afraid of you. <laughs> it's like Jason being like, I don't know why these fucking camp counselors don't trust me. Yeah, I'm just a man in a mask that keeps killing all their all their fucking campers. What's their problem? Jesus. Yeah. I just, I don't, it was so, it was like there was a different writer in this episode. Might suddenly, have been. Like, suddenly everything was really, really convenient. Uh, yeah, Poppy... <sighs> Like, I, I looked forward to them doing something interesting with their character, because it seemed like they were going to. And they didn't. And then this whole episode is just a... And I mean, there's like a forced sentimentality to it, like, and like, there's fake stakes, and like, fake drama. Fake stakes. Built on the fact that like, oh, she she is unsure what to do, or who she is, or whatever, but like... It's really forced. Why? Yeah. <laughs> For drama. Of course. Like, if they would have had even one single line about why she was on the fence, and it, that wasn't just, well, people don't like bugsters. She, she, she's like, I killed someone to, like, I'm alive because someone's dead, and this means maybe I have to keep killing. I gotta keep killing until everything's right. Yeah, it's like... You're not... There was no point in this episode where I was like, she might stay with the Bugsters. No. Like, never. she might get she might get herself killed or something, right? Because she hates the fact that she had to kill somebody to live. That might have been, like, a cool little steak or whatever, but they were playing it like she was going to stay with the Bugsters. But it was really obvious that was never on the table. Hey, Jeff... Hey, Liam. Why didn't Parrot just program her back to being evil when they had her at the base? They can just program her, right? This program seems like a plot hole! <laughs> if anyone can just rewrite her program, just make her evil again. Fuck. Why did you even bother having the, the rooftop conversation with her? So here's... Why didn't Parrot shoot lightning out of his hands from wearing the Delta belt? Fuck off. Here's <laughs> the thing, right? Okay. Is that, like, she... She had a crisis of conscience or whatever, right? We can yeah. put that aside. There's yeah. another silly revelation in this episode, at least to me. And maybe the next episode will completely change my mind on it and I'll be on board. Uh, I think we joked earlier in the series that, like, Parid was Emu's bugster. I think... I, th I vaguely remember one of us bringing that up. Maybe I'm full of shit. And it pro was probably a while ago, it was probably 25 weeks ago, but I, maybe one of us brought that up. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Yeah. But like, but it doesn't make any sense. Why is that? Because Parrot isn't, never goes into Emu's body. He's never, like, part of him. He's always separate. But Emu has, like, the split personality thing since the beginning of the series. While Parrot has been around, even, he's done the split personality thing. How does that work? I don't know. Maybe they'll explain it. I think it's too I early to I'm, pass judgment on whether yeah, this makes sense. that's what I'm saying. Literally all he I'm says saying. is, I'm your bugster, and nothing else. So I think next episode we'll get more of a, yeah, a thing on that. I'm not 
passing fucking justice here on it. I'm not like bringing the hammer down on it. Okay. I'm Don't just saying that I really hope that they explain that in a better way. I'm and sure not they just will. Like he's been remotely bugstering him. Rem- <laughs> Every time he's uh, Genius Gamer M, it's like him controlling him with a joystick from the distance. <laughs> in the next episode, right? There's like a preview in the next episode of Mighty Brothers Double X talking to each other, and one of them's Emo and the other one's Parrot, mm-hmm. but. Mighty Brothers Double X like beat the shit out of Parrot once. <laughs> don't ask so... questions. <laughs> I don't, don't ask know. questions. We get to watch Poppy get fucking smacked. Yeah. This episode, which is great. <laughs> ten out of ten. It's it's like it's like he's punishing her for having a shitty episode. Poppy is back in her normal place now. <laughs> Sidekick comic relief. Oh boy. Great. I missed Onari. Um, next episode is gonna be the, the the fucking debut of Perfect Knockout, too. Which is gonna be cool. Looks like he's got a red and blue sun behind his face. Looks pretty alright. I, um, saw fan art of what I think is the final form in X-Aid. Oh, no. The funny part about that is, right, is that, um... People don't even try to not send us spoilers. Like, they actively send us spoilers all the time. No, I see all that shit, so I don't care like, if Jeff doesn't. It, doesn't. it doesn't bug me that much, but I'm always like, man, come on, guys. <laughs> I didn't need to of, see that. Most of the fan base looks at the scans, and it's just nothing to them. But, you know, yeah. some guys some guys. It's, it doesn't really it. bug me, but it always it always cracks me up. Because I always talk about how I don't look at scans, and then people are like, oh, you don't look at them? Here's a photo. Here's, here, look at this. <laughs> Emu's gonna die next episode. Scans Uh-oh. This, so. Uh-oh. And he comes back six times. He could, you know, with Common Rider the way it's been lately, I could see Emu dying once and coming back. Yeah, at some point. That's that's been a trope now. In the thirties, maybe. Um, do you have anything else to say about this episode? I would give it like a D plus. No, I'd say I'd say five point five, maybe a six out of ten. That's like a D plus. Uh, in Canada, six is a C. Six sixty percent is a C. Wow, you guys are dumb. Yeah, apparently. The American system is weird, where, like, you you get, like, up to, like, 60 is, like, an F or whatever. Mm. And and then, like, 60 to 70 is, like, a D, and 70 to 80 is a C, and 80 to 90 is a B or whatever. And it's like, why is half your fu- oh like, over half your fucking scale failing? Yeah. <laughs> That's so weird. In Canada, it's 0 to 50 is failure. 50 to 60, D. 60 to uh, 70 is C. Well, half your fucking scale is failing. Yeah, not as much, though. Yeah, I guess so. It's just A is, like, there's 20 fucking units for A. 80 to 100 is A. Really? Yeah. That's so strange. It is strange. It's because we're so fucking, so many people are getting A's, they had to stratify it more. Probably. Must be it. Maybe that's why we stratified F's so much. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything else to say about this episode? I don't have anything else to say about Common Rider or the American school grading system, so we can move on. We will move on to our news segment. News! News, news, news! Um, news that I thought was really big and then turned out to not be super big. Common Rider Wizard is airing on a certain channel in the U.S. and Canada... Uh, called TV Japan. It's like a premium cable thing that you get. And guess what? It's airing in Japanese with no subtitles, so I hope you know Japanese. Why? It's just, it's it, like I said... I guess it's, it's just for Japanese-speaking people, I guess. Yeah, but... TV Japan is probably just a thing you can buy if you speak Japanese and you want to watch some Japanese dramas. I'm going to echo Liam's sentiment from Twitter... Out of all the series they could have chosen, they chose Wizard. Yeah, I don't understand at all, really, why they picked that. It doesn't make any sense. I can't think of any reason. When it first when I it first came to my attention, a friend of ours, friend of the show Graham, told us on Twitter. He said, "Oh, they're bringing Wizard stateside," and I was like, "Oh shit, they're like adapting it. They're like gonna make like a Power Rangers style thing." And then I found out, no, 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 it's just fucking Wizard. I was like, "Well, why would you do that? Why? What would possess a man?" 
I don't know. It's, <laughs> there are so many other choices. I don't. Mm. It's well, it's wizard. It's coming, and uh, it, the the big thing was like when I found that it was on a special channel. That's one thing. But when I found out it wasn't subbed, that's like, oh, okay. Well, it's not really like localized. It's no, just they're literally here. just playing it. Just the raws. <laughs> this is what you get. Oh well. Oh well. So still. Uh, watching it online with subs is still the best way. It's not like Amazon's where they're actually going to put subs on it, I, I assume. but We assume. We assume. <laughs> we make great assumptions. Uh, that's 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 happening. That's really neat, though. Uh, Wizards, uh, Wizard and Amazon's getting, getting yeah, brought over. slowly. It's trickling over. Trickling. Maybe if Wizard get, gets watched, we can see Gaim or uh, It's a little uh, weird. Shows. It's a little weird that Tokusatsu's taken so long. I actually think here's a little like sidebar, right? Here's a little uh, a little topic delving. All right. Um, it's strange to me that Tokusatsu hasn't been brought over already in well, some I mean, way, shape, or form. In that way, you get Power Rangers. That's, that's not what I mean. Okay. I mean like anime gets brought over by the fucking boatload, right? Yeah, and yeah. has official subs. But not Tokusatsu. And you bring up exactly what my end point was going to be, is that it's fucking Haim Saban's fault because of Power <laughs> Rangers. He Yeah, he owns the rights for all Sentai distribution, yeah. so... Like, he he brought it over here and he, like, bastardized it. Excuse me. I mean, Power Rangers has been good quite often. But he brought it over here and he changed it so entirely that that is the audience for it now. So there's no reason in, like, Toei's eyes to just bring it over here with subs because, you know, they can just sell it to Savon and make a ton of money and not even worry about it. But they are bring, they're bringing Sentai over with subs. Like, a season at a time. Shout Factory is doing that. A little bit. A little bit at a time. They're, they're doing a season. That's, that's uh, chugging through Sentai. But Kamen Rider, for some reason, never got a hold in the same... Like, even when they did a Power Ranger-style adaptation with Mast Rider and oh, with uh, Dragon Mas- Knight... Mast Rider was terrible. Mast Rider was Knight fucking was awful. Barely serviceable. Dragon Knight was as good as some Power Rangers shows. True, and it it it, it just never took hold. Like it, I feel it had, like it was too late at that point. Yeah, like I've seen bits of Dragon Knight and I didn't like it, but it had drama, and I can see why a, a kid might might get into it. I could yeah. see why it might be successful, but yeah, it was kind of late in the. It's game. like the Power Rangers boom was over at that point. I mean. The, there's a Power Rangers movie right now, but it's like a nostalgia cash in type yeah, of thing. It's, it's a I've really, heard it's actually pretty good, but I, yeah, it looked awful. But my my friend saw it and he said it was not half bad. He yeah, like it. everyone I talk to says that it's pretty decent, but yeah. it's like a nostalgia cash in. It's meant to get like twenty somethings, thirty somethings into the movie theater seats. It's not really for kids in the same way. Yeah, it's for people. Because kids don't really watch Power Rangers in the droves that they used to back in the day. It's still a fairly popular series, enough to, like, keep an audience. Yeah. But the heyday of Power Rangers adaptations is over. It's it's not the 90s anymore. And even when Dragon Knight was airing, I think the heyday of Power Rangers adaptations was over. Yeah, Dragon Knight was 2009. That was long after kids moved on. Iron Man was over by that point. Wow. It's a different world. Dude, you want to know something that'll blow your mind? Blow my mind. In 2005. Mm. 2005 doesn't seem like a lifetime ago, right? No, not really. You can remember where you were in 2005. Yeah. Uh, That is the year that Revenge of the Sith came out. Oh my god. I think about that all the fucking time. <laughs> Anytime I feel old, I'm like, fucking Revenge of the Sith. Oh, oh Revenge of the Sith. Well, the least bad prequel came out in 2005. Yeah. I don't, I always I don't say, know how much I agree with that. But... I, come on. like Whatever you say about Revenge of the Sith, are you going to look me straight in my eye and tell me it's worse than, worse than Phantom Menace and Attack of the No, Clones? I'm not no. going to say it's worse than Phantom Menace. Phantom Menace is dog shit. Phantom They're all Menace bad. Is one of the worst films of all time. They're all bad. I always, I always say, if you watch the original Star Wars trilogy and you're absolutely dying for whatever reason to see how Anakin became Darth Vader, you can just watch Revenge of the Sith. Really, everything you need is there. That's and it's true. The least ball numbing movie. 
It's really funny how completely superfluous the first two prequels are. <laughs> like, at the beginning of the movie, it's like, there's a war, and it sets up all the characters that you need, and all the shit that you need to know happens. So, uh, the first two are fucking pointless. Damn. Damn. Yeah. Another mark against those films. Yep, yep, one more. This is mark number 743,000. Well, my tirade is over. You, we can continue with news. <laughs> I have a, a fun thing, actually. Okay. Or, yeah, this is, I guess, it's a question, but fuck it, we can do it now, since we're talking about adaptation. Sure. Um, a lot, no I was rules. wondering a lot... Hmm? There are no rules. No rules. I was wondering what... Because what, what, I figured, what are they, they going to call it? They can't call it Masked Rider. They, they're, it's fucking Japanese. But I thought for a minute that Adness might still have the copyright to Common Rider. I don't think they do. So I think they're just going to call it Common Rider Wizard. But here's my question for you, Jeff. Okay. Think of a Rider series, any Rider series. Common Rider Blade. Okay. If you had to bring Blade over to an American audience and change the title to be not Master Rider, not Common Rider, just like a normal title like anything else, what would you call it? Uh, f- uh, 52. Oh, that's not bad. That's clever. I like that. Or uh, Ace of Spades. Ace of Spades. Yeah. That sounds cool. You could just call it Missing Ace, honestly. You could, yeah. Missing Ace is not bad. 52 is really... 52 is a little... It's... it's, it's kids wouldn't get it. Maybe no. it's it's too, like, cryptic for kids, but it's very clever. I like it. That's, that's um, a good that's DC a good Comics might be really fucking pissed off about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Pick one. Oh, God. Off the top of my head, Ryuki, obviously. Of course. And what would that be called? Vent? No. What? That sounds dumb. Vent. Vento? Vento? No. That sounds even weirder. Uh, the Kamen Rider Night Show? You could, <laughs> you could call it Advent War. Or. Oh, jeez. 52, because everyone's got cards. Oh my god. <laughs> you should call it Tatakai. Tatakai. I'd probably call it Advent War or something like that. That's not bad. It's not bad. It describes what the fuck it's about. Rider Battle. Now, Rider Battle sounds kind of cheesy. Yeah, because it is. Ryuki is not cheesy. <laughs> the best rider show. Ryuki has some cheese. Don't pretend. Not okay. I mean, all riders got some cheese. Yeah, Ryuki's a, a big juicy burger, but you better believe it's got some cheddar cheese on there. <laughs> um, uh, and one more news story. If you remember last week, there was a cryptic Deno announcement. They announced that there was an announcement coming for Deno. Oh, I'm excited. So, this week it was revealed... That there is going to be a CSM Deno belt. That it's was the, that was it? Yeah, it's the 10th anniversary this year. I so was 100% I, certain it was going to be another move. Yeah, I thought it would be at least a V-Cinema or something, like Kamen Rider yeah. X8 meets Deno. Nope, you get the CSM belt. So if you got huh? $6,000 to spare, and you love Deno, this is your year. 600 million yen. 16 quintillion. The entire fucking GDP of the U.S., to spare you can buy this belt and uh have a great time it's probably a web exclusive so you can't really (laughs) you can buy this belt through a scalper on ebay for six times the price and have a whale of a time i want a i want a csm belt really badly but i just i don't have a mortgage that'll allow such a thing (laughs) if a genie appeared before me and said i can either cure cancer in all humans or give you a CSM Kabuto belt. I'd probably pick the Kabuto belt. In Jesus all honesty. Christ. Yeah. I think... We always talk about how we've learned a little bit about Liam in this episode. <laughs> and today I feel like we learned too much about Liam. <laughs> this, was, this was the kicker that brings it over the edge. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's my news. Moshi Moshi Fies. Toys and a weird uh, uh, localization. Moshi yes. Moshi Fies. Moshi Moshi Fi Ring, ring, ring. Phone call. This week on Common Rider Fies, a girl shows her panties to an underage boy who's like eight years old. That Twice. was so fucking awkward. That, okay, so this is, this is a weird set of episodes that's about many things. Uh, Fies comes back. 
Takumi comes back, he, he yeah, decides he, gets, he wants to be a good guy. He gets the, the power-up. He gets red form. He gets blaster, which I fucking love, by the way. And um, he, he decides to come back. Sawada sacrifices himself to fight the Lucky Clover, who are just a bunch of clowns at this point. Um, Kaido is still obsessed with this stupid child. And that's 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 mostly the gist of it. Oh, and, like, uh, Osada gets like tracked down by the police. Oh yeah, and she, she gets just arrested. Murders an entire fucking platoon of police officers. Delta and throws everybody's the belt. like, and everybody's like, why are you being so mean to her? <laughs> she murdered an entire platoon of police officers. So let's just get right into our opinions. These three episodes are weird. I don't they like. They really them. are. I don't like them. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. The best scene in the whole fucking show so far is Delta is being Delta. He's sitting on some steps with his uh, friend. His yeah. girlfriend? I guess. And he's like, I want to go home. He's like, fuck, I hate that. I haven't seen my own house in six months since I started being <laughs> Delta. And he's like, if only I... And he throws the belt into the middle of traffic. And the girl's like... Girl's like, well, that certainly isn't in, like, a really heavy-duty reinforced suitcase. I better run out and grab it right in front of this truck that's not even about to run over because it's going to go between the wheels. And she runs out into traffic and gets hit by a truck. She gets hit by a truck, and then she leaves the hospital later that day. Maybe it's because of the Orphanox Cybos or whatever. Whatever. And then he he finds his resolve because it turns out he's in love with her, I guess. He's like, I'm, this arc is so fucked up. He's, he doesn't want to be Delta, so he throws the belt out on the street. But it's not like... It doesn't follow quite. It's not quite that him not wanting to be Delta has resulted in his friend getting hurt. It's more just like him being a fucking idiot and throwing the belt into traffic has resulted in his friend getting hurt. That wouldn't really and change... His friend, his friend got hurt because he's a giant fucking baby, right? And That's he's a true. giant fucking baby so because he won't use Delta. It, it connects if you look at it that way. But the actual reason why she gets hurt is so dumb, I can't... The the whole... Everything related to Delta everything, is so dumb. And the funniest the... part about that, right, <laughs> yeah. is that he gets, he gets his resolve, and he's like, I will fight. And he transforms like a badass. And then he gets thoroughly fucking trashed by every enemy he fights. Yep. That's the, the one... It's nice to know that no matter how Fi's morphs and changes into a bad show as it goes on, it's nice that there's one constant, and that's Delta is always a piece of shit, asshole, yeah. idiot face who sucks all the fun at every scene he's in. Like, he fucking... He transforms like a badass twice in one episode. Hmm. Like, he's looking all powerful, and he's hitching, transforms or whatever, and he gets slapped around, like, fucking my whole childhood. It's, it's on the screen. <laughs> And he just ends up on the ground. Then he gets up and transforms like a badass That's, again. Yeah, they under in the underpass he gets his ass kicked by the lucky clover, and the, he the Fies appears and says, "I'll fight with you guys." And they just get up and transform again. That's not. That's I get. There's no reason why they wouldn't be able to. But, like, narratively, that's against the rules of Kamen Rider. If you get your ass kicked until you get knocked out of your transformation, you can't transform again for the end of, for the rest of the scene. That's no. how it is. But you can't, not in Fies. If they just get up and transform again, that kind of ruins the intensity of a fight. The point is you're you're beaten and you're put into a, a vulnerable place. If you just no. get up and transform again, it kind of wrecks that narrative device. You're not even hurt. You just you, get up and transform again. Yeah, what the what the heck? That should be it for the know. scene. And you mentioned uh, Sawada, right? He, like, sacrificed himself by fighting the Lucky Clover, but he didn't. Kaiza shows up and murders him. Yeah. <laughs> And then just leaves. And then, like, Takumi shows up and he's like, Oh, you sacrificed yourself fighting the Lucky Clover. And he's like, Bye, and dies. Like, <laughs> he's Takumi like, no, is never actually, going to know. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Fucking it's, it's... Kaiza continues to be a fuckhole. Kaiza continues to. That's one thing that I always will like. Kaiza continues to be a fuckhole. As I'm really glad Sawada is dead and gone. I hated him. That's good. I hate his good. guts. And not like not like Kaiza, where like I love to hate Kaiza. I like that he's this grimy asshole. I hate Sawada as a fictional character. I hate him being there. He ruins every fucking scene he touches. He's a nonsense asshole. And I'm glad he's gone. <laughs> I'm glad he's dead. I'm glad he's dead. I'm glad he's dead. And fucking I'm happy. Uh, Hojo gets a fun scene. 
But oh, yeah. he's been bullied by Kitazaki this whole time, and Kitazaki gets his shit wrecked by Fi's blaster form. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they're carrying him down the stairs, and Hojo just fucking drops him and Whoops, starts laughing my hand at him. Slipped. Yeah. Oh, Hojo. <laughs> Hojo. God, I love him. He's see. There is a character that I love to hate. Hojo. Hojo from Hojo. Agito. Not, not, not this Hojo. Agito's yeah, Hojo. Agito. Is the see, I. I felt like I hated Kusaka when I saw him the first time, and I he, like I didn't even enjoy his character, but now I do. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'd feel similarly about Hojo maybe if I went back and watch. Watched. Yeah, he's he's like a bratty asshole, and it's really satisfying to watch. Like eventually, he kind of gets his. He doesn't die or anything, but there is a scene. Yeah, he ends up with the girl at the end. Yeah, but there Spoilers. is spoilers. The girl he ends up with, he's like interrogating her, and she's like, "I gotta go." Help launch G four because Agito's in danger. I don't remember the exact context, and he's like he's like keeping her there at the police station, yeah. and she just kicks him in the balls and runs out. That's a and satisfying he, little. Then he falls in love with her, and then he falls in love with her as as as, as men do. He is that kind of guy. That's how I met my third wife. She kicked me in the nuts. Got married the next day. Yeah, whatever happened to her? I haven't seen her in a really oh, long she, time. She died in an unrelated accident. Anyways, let's move on. There's a scene in this episode of <laughs> Kamen Rider. There's, they're still doing the fucking thing where Kaido is obsessed with this stupid little kid, and it doesn't resolve this episode. It's These episodes, gone. for all intents and purposes, aren't about Kaido and his weird obsession with a child. Mm, thank it's, God. It's about uh, Osada. And her weird obsession with a child. Wait. Yeah, her weird obsession with showing her panties It's the child. There's Okay, there's a scene where... Kaido's trying to calm the kid down because he's an angry kid and he's angry that Kaido didn't save his parents and Osada's with them and instead of he, like Kaido's trying to give him a cookie or something and he ignores Kaido and pulls Osada's skirt up so later on in a brilliant bit of a callback uh, he's freaking out again and Osada calms him down by lifting up her skirt and showing him her underwear it's a fucking seven year old kid and he's like staring out after her later, right? And she looks back at him and like smiles. Uh, and I was like, this is the creepiest shit I've ever seen. Uh, this is creepier than Kusaka in the rain scene. This isn't this isn't Japan. <laughs> this is something more sinister. It's so weird. <laughs> but Osada kills a bunch of police officers and she gets taken in by the cops and it turns out that they're doing weird ass experiments underground yeah another some... agito actor is back shoichi sugami yeah. is back the other one he's he's yeah. here and he's doing experiments to try and turn orphanox back into people only the orphanox escapes and escapes with osada and like it seems like he's gonna be a cool new character or whatever because he's like working as hard as he can to protect her. Mm -hmm. But uh, the riders show up and he just runs off and fucking disintegrates into nothing. <laughs> the riders are beating up the Orphanok, and then Fize jumps in and protects the Orphanok, and then the Orphanok just dies anyway. He just runs off and dies. And he runs away and he's like, "Oh, I'm so tired," and then he just fucking turns into dust. And it's like, what is what's the purpose of this scene anymore, right? There's, there's no one to protect. I thought it was a character we'd already seen. I was racking my brain like, who is this fucker? And um, no, I he thought no he one. was going like I thought he was going to end up being really important. Like they were going to bring him into the as the fourth guy on the Lucky Clover or something. Mm, nope. Uh, but as it turns out, he literally has no name whatsoever and dies in the same episode he first appears in. Unnamed Orphanok number sixty three. Uh, sad story. Sad story. But uh, uh, the let's... episode ends with uh, Kiba is murdering cops now. He's he's, a he's like he's like fucking hate you pigs. Fuck the police. <laughs> and he turns into a fucking horseman and starts killing them all. Yeah, because he's like, "What did you do to Osada?" And I'm like, "Dude, she murdered like she, thirty-five men, she's police officers a lot of since the start of the show." Lucky Clover is so desperate that they try and. Uh, recruiter. <laughs> There's such a funny scene There's... <laughs> where the the CEO of Smart Brain is describing her, and he's like, she, her power is is hidden below the surface, but she's killed so many, and no one knows. And then he puts her photo down, and he says, and she's a very cute young girl. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 last thing, the very cute young girl, that's the kicker. Now she can join. Yeah. If she was into some ugly dude or something, fuck, she's never joining Lucky Clover. But she's a very cute young girl, she's and a I'm a very like, cute young girl. So this show keeps telling me. <laughs> Uh, I have a couple things that I liked about this episode. Okay. 
or these three episodes. Um, I love Blaster. I love I Blaster's cool terrible shit. special effects. I love, I love, yeah, I mean, the, it's, it's, what, it's 2004 fun. era special effects, but he's yeah. flying around, he's got a jetpack, and then when he puts it in, the, it's the coolest, I love Fize's belt sounds, but my favorite probably of all is when he puts his phone into the Blaster Square, whatever you want to call it, and it goes, Awakening! Like, that sounds so cool. That is cool. And then the fucking satellite, like, beams it down, like it was there since the start of the show, like, just waiting for 50 episodes until it got the chance to beam the suit down onto this one guy. <laughs> I don't and know. And it doesn't even beam a suit down, right? It just hits him with this energy, and then his suit fills up with red. It beams like it's the a okay liquid. signal, yeah. Um, it's it's weird how she gets it, though. She just kind of gets it in the mail. She gets she gets blaster boat in the mail. Yeah, somebody drops it off. A weird-looking guy drops yeah. it off. And I'm assuming that that's, like, her... her uh, adoptive father, this yeah, old the, CEO, the king. Last we checked, he was still in the basement, right? Yeah, I'm assuming he's the king anyway. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, uh, maybe he's the Orphanot king. For a minute, I thought the Orphanot king was the one that the police had in custody. Yeah. I was like, oh, that, that's interesting. He's that's like, what I was thinking, but no, he's nobody. He's Yeah, like he seemed like he was clearly important, but no, he just busted out and died. Maybe he was the Orphanot king and they're just their plans are just fucked now. Wouldn't that like, be funny? Like Osada being captured by the police is like it seems like they were like oh shit yeah we had her kill all those people we should probably have something happen with her right because they haven't done anything with her in 63 years I'm glad she's in the plot again that's one thing I can say she's doing yeah. things that's fine she's not fucking following Kaido around going I love you Kaido Kaido's like fucking like hey turn yourself in I fucking hate you Kaido has made it so abundantly clear she is an idiot to keep following him also like no one has said uh, Keitaro's name around her? Ke- Keitaro? Yeah, Keitaro's name has never been spoken. Like, he goes by Keitaro. I understand her, right? She, they call her Osada-san or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's, in her messages, she's Yuki. Yeah. But he's Keitaro. That's what everyone calls him. Just no one happens to say it. Next episode, they're going to figure it out, though. Finally. Yeah. There's a bit That's where... something that, like, when he started texting Yuki Chan again, mm. I was like, fuck, they remembered that? My god, I didn't even remember that. Neither did I. He met his I'd internet completely, girlfriend. Completely forgotten that shit. She wasn't even ugly in the end. That's that's a pretty good, pretty good score for him. <laughs> There's, like, fucking uh, a moment where she's like, you know, just grab your crush's hand or whatever, and then he grabs her hand, and no bells of recognition go off in her head <laughs> whatsoever. She's just like, Keitaro, you're the fucking worst. I don't really know your names, but fucking whatever your name is, you're the worst. Here's here's Osada. Is, uh, the best way to attract a girl is to grab her hand, and then someone grabs her hand, and she goes, fuck, why would you do that? What the fuck are you trying to do? That's so disgusting, your goddamn you problem? creep. Yeah, you fuck ass. Piece of shit. Train Kitaro wrong is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really curious as to that's that's one thing that's keeping me going. I'm curious as to what they're gonna do when they figure it out because they're clearly not in love. No, but maybe they'll fall in love. Like you're the man who's been sending me all these romantic messages all this time. I don't know about all that. I think I don't she's know, just gonna be like, what? Fies is like watching your favorite grandparent get Alzheimer's it's like oh it was, my god it was such a good show and now it's like I don't even know what it is anymore it's gotten pretty bad it's gotten it's I mean gotten it's not bad. terrible it's not te- it's just forgotten everything about it like, like yeah. it's bloated with characters the villains are a fucking joke uh, the, the the even the other characters the show just doesn't know what to do with any of them everyone's just puttering around waiting for the end like here's the thing right is it like Smart Brain has none of the belts now. <laughs> they're they're How, Why are they acting like they're closer to their goal now? I don't... They they had all three of them at one point. They should be kicking themselves every day. Yeah, they have none. Don't they need all three? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anymore. I don't, I don't know about this show, man. I feel like I might have been right when I said it was going to be bad. I think people's opinions were right. Like, other Kamen Rider shows go downhill, right? Kabuto goes kind of downhill... But Kabuto, not oh boy, not even close to this shit. True. Like, Kabuto so, doesn't exactly stick its landing, but it has a satisfying ending. And uh, Fai's 
like it never gets this bad. It's just it gets kind of ridiculous, just with the the Hopper Bros and some other stuff, the Dark Kitchen. But even that only lasts a couple episodes. This shit is like the entire show is breaking down at the seams. It's just I don't know. I don't know, dude. I don't, I don't fucking know. know. No, we'll, we'll only want uh, me to we find did, out. We did see some cool behind the scenes stuff from Fies though that we didn't know about beforehand. Yeah, this week I was just I was browsing the Common Rider wiki as I do when I'm bored. And I found these three riders that only exist in concept art books that they never used. It's Common Rider uh, Super Alpha or something like that. Who was it? Neo Alpha. Neo Alpha. Pyron. Pyron. And Common Rider Sita. Common Rider Sita. I like these three suits so much that I'll put them in the blog post just for you to look at. Just it's not news or anything. I just discovered them this week. I think everyone should see them because I don't think a lot of people have seen them because they haven't actually been in anything. They're really cool suits that didn't they are, get used. They are pretty damn cool. Yeah, I think they were for stage shows that just never panned out. Because there is a Common Rider Alpha in a stage show. But, you uh, know, there was no Neo Alpha. Common Rider Pyron is fucking awesome. I love yeah, it. Yeah, they all look so cool. Uh, the other two are alright. I like Neo Alpha a lot. That's the coolest one for me. It's His, his visor is like an alpha. Yeah. Yeah, that's sick. It's all right. It comes no, it's fucking <laughs> sick. Pyron's better. Mm, he's okay. Anyway. Anyway, that's Sayonara Fies. Sayonara, fuck you. You ruined it's, like an hour of my life this week. It's, re- it's really not getting very good. <laughs> it's not that great. It's it's going downhill at a pretty brisk pace. I'll stand by the first half of the show. It's great. See, but... I'll st- like after the first few episodes. Maybe I'll stand by it. I like, even like beginning first... episodes are. Ugh. That makes it so much worse, though. If it was just bad from the start, like Ghost, it's not like nothing's lost with Ghost. It just sucks from start to finish. But Fize has something oh really God. special. Fize is something... comparing Fize to Ghost right now. I know, but Fize oh had something God. special, and it loses it, which makes it way harder to watch. Yeah. Oh well. Oh well. Sayonara. Uh, we also watched Comrade Amazons this week. Comrade Amazons was uh, un un is fucking exceptionally violent this week. Oh yeah, a lot of blood. Uh, somebody pointed out, I didn't notice this the first time, but Eu's father's played by Hojo. Is that what Hojo is? I didn't notice. Yes. Yeah, I didn't notice the first time. Somebody pointed it out on Twitter. I will actually look up the name of this person. Okay. So that I'm not just there. fucking being an asshole. It was Don Piantis. Don Piantis. Okay. Who told us that Hojo was Eu's dad. And uh, you, you can fucking see it sometimes, and then other times, not at all. He's Yeah, he's very... They do him up really well. I couldn't, yeah. couldn't tell it was Hojo at all. He's just a lot older. I'm kind of disappointed. I wanted to, him to be an actual... Imagine if he was a member of 4C... It was like a, a big <laughs> dick. The big reveal in this episode of Amazons is that uh, Haruka's sister, his uh, not real sister, so they can totally fuck. Mizuki. Mizuki is part of 4C, and she's like super ultra trained to kill Amazons. And she says, yo, Haruka, if it ever comes to it, I'm going to murder you. And Haruka's like, cool. That's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. It's, That's what this, I want. This episode was good. Uh, Haruka comes back, but he's not like a... I like when they do that. He's the main character of the first season, and now he's sort of this mysterious, powerful side entity. Oh, I absolutely one. love that. People treat him with this weird reverence, and he, he kicks ass whenever he's on screen. I like that. He's 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 got mystery to him this time yeah, around. It seems like he wants to kill Eu. Yeah, he but, goes after her. Um... Uh, Chihiro tries to fight him off and everything, and eventually Mizuki shows up and is like, I got this bullet that'll tear you limb from limb if I fire it into you. And Haruka's like, well, I'm gonna go home now. <laughs> Just coincidentally, I've decided that my soap operas are on, and I've decided to leave. Not because yeah, you scared has, me. It's not... It's You didn't make me. I chose to. <laughs> and uh, we get... A little bit of a revelation about Eu's past in that she knows Haruka. Because Haruka killed her dad. Yeah, Haruka killed her dad. And also he was friends with her dad beforehand. Wowzers. So Eu has apparently is alive and has like her... She's dead. She has all her memories. 
And it's not even that she doesn't have her emotions, it's just that she doesn't care. Uh, Tasha she, Bono words it in a dead. really confusing way. Yeah, she's dead. She's a corpse. She's a corpse, but she has her memories. Dude, th- there's a really great scene. she doesn't care. What? There's a really great scene that I really, really enjoyed. My favorite scene in the episode where Tachibana is explaining what Eu is. Mm. And, uh, it's fucking, um, Chihiro's like, you turned a human into an Amazon or whatever. And he's like, no, 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 I'd never do something as crass and base as that. I have to protect human dignity. I just made an Amazon out of a corpse. I'm not as low as those people that make Amazons out of people. I'm better. And he walks off, and, like, the assistant guy is, like, fucking chilled to the bone. <laughs> and then he, like, turns and walks after him, and I was like, fuck, that was done really well. It's, it's good visual storytelling. It was really good. It's this, this show is, like, a step above a lot of Kamen Rider. It's, it's a different level. It's got a it's- lot more... Uh, it's it's just a lot more well written and well directed, and even the cinematography is better. Oh yeah, there's a lot more shaky cam this season, which I'm not really appreciating that much. I'm fine with some shaky cam. Um, it's like a little out of control in some scenes where I can't even really tell what's happening. A little bit, <laughs> but uh, the action it's, scenes it's never especially. for more than it's never for more than a couple seconds. But sometimes it'll be like a quick one second shot where the camera is shaking wildly. And all you yeah. see is two people flailing around in a suit, and you're not sure what's happening. I think maybe that's to hide, like, they can't see what they're doing, and the choreography's a bit awkward, so make it yeah. not quite clear what's happening. Maybe. Maybe. That's my guess. Um, we also get uh, the return of the original hunting team, the original extermination squad, who yeah. go into the bar that uh, the chief owns... And the the leader of Team Kiss joins them. The fucking Team Kiss. I'm glad that we don't have to talk about Team Kiss anymore. Yeah, once I learn the guy's name, I can stop calling him the leader of Team Kiss. It's a fucking stupid ass name. Does he but, look a little uh, bit like Yamato? Kazakiri yes. Yamato T. Yeah, yes. I saw yes. that too. He does look a little bit like Yamato. When I saw, he him, looks like he like, could be Yamato's cousin or something. Yeah. When I saw him, I was like, "Oh my god, did they get him back like that soon to do another no. show?" And I looked it up, and no, it's not him. But it is not him. There he does look kind of like him. Um, fucking uh, Chihiro looks nothing like the hospital kid from Kamen Rider the First, but he's dressed exactly like him. Oh, with the scarf, yeah, with the scarf, and he has like the same haircut. It's like he's cosplaying him. <laughs> it's really strange. What's What's worse, the character of the hospital kid, or someone who is dumb enough that they would actually cosplay the character? <laughs> of the hospital kid? If you cosplay spoilers, his like cobra form, that'd be cool as fuck. Well, spoilers for Kamen Rider the first. Watch out there. Yeah, Kamen Rider the next. No, it is the first. The fuck. first with the hospital. The next. Kid, yeah. The next is the one with the. The next is the ring. The far less good costumes, but better actors playing the villains. Yeah. Like, uh, Scissors Jaguar is, like, the dumbest fucking costume, but I love that guy oh, so much. Oh, I love the actor. He's, he's a joy to watch. It's my favorite part of the movie. The <laughs> action scenes and anytime Scissors Jaguar is ever doing anything. Yeah. It's 10 out of 10. So one thing I really like Oh, there's about... titties in that movie, too, so that's good. Yeah, it's always good. That's, a, that's an instant one-point bump-up. <laughs> <laughs> so it's one out of ten. <laughs> um, one thing I love about this episode, or more about next episode, is going to be Chihiro trying to go on a date with Eu while she's not even cognizant of what's happening. Yeah, like he's real persistent for some reason. Like she's completely blowing him off because she has no emotions and mm-hmm. no thoughts of her own or anything. And he's just like, no, you fucking love you. I we'll love like, you, you. It's like trying to date a fridge. It's just not yeah. happening, dude. He's dating a body pillow, basically. He's dating, yeah. I mean, it, it, people do it, but no one's going to look at you right. Yeah, people, Liam. People, yeah. <laughs> I've seen a video where a dude does it, and boy. That sounds like fun. Yeah, I bet it's a lot of fun. So, Amazon's is consistently good, and I'm really excited. Uh, still not as good as last season, but it can get there. It, it, yeah, I can see it getting there. I wonder if Jin's going to come back. Yeah, that's when Haruka comes back, that was the first question on my mind, is Jin back? Because he never gets a conclusion proper either. 
Not really. He was pretty fucked up. He was, but... His face was pretty jacked up, yeah, but he never yeah. gets a... You never see what happens to him, what his face is. Great if, it'd be great if he was still alive, but he was, like, horribly fucking disfigured. Like, yeah, he, he was, like, full on Amazon now, and... That'd be great. Yeah. I do cool. really wonder what, like, Haruka and his crew have been up to. And next episode, Mamoru. Yeah. He's in the preview. I'm really excited about that shit, too. It's gonna be nuts. I'm really excited about it. Uh, so, why don't we channel some of that excitement into answering some emails? No, it's already gone. It's out of me. Uh, we got two emails from uh, Sam. Sam, a prolific viewer. Uh, th- you can thank Sam specifically since he sent an email to us that said, Jeff, don't let Liam watch Go Rider. It has blade spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you sent me. Like, right after last week's episode, you sent me, hey, don't watch Go Rider. It's got bad Blade spoilers in it, I just realized. And I had it all downloaded, too, and I was going to watch it. And I was like, yo, thanks, dude. Yeah. Uh, it's, God, I almost let you. Because I'm going to watch, you bitch. I'm going to watch Blade probably after we're done with Fies. Dude, Blade's good. I like Blade a lot. It looks super cool. Um, We already answered what our choices for, like, giving a show a rider... Uh, an Amazon treatment would be. Yeah. We've already talked about that. Um, and he said, P.S. If there is a dick measuring contest for how long fans have been around, I've been listening to RCR since Jeff did two minute, uh, two ten minute episodes talking about early drive that were linked on the old Tumblr by himself. Bullshit. You cannot be serious that you saw the two, you listened to the two lost episodes. <laughs> so we, I didn't think we had a single fan who had found the lost episodes, but here he is. He's wow. apparently been on board that long. Holy shit! That's fucking crazy. That's that's Coco you win. Puffs. Yeah, <laughs> you win. Um, I'll go. I'm gonna go to the dollar store tomorrow and get you a nice plastic karate trophy, and I'll mail that to you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the second email from him, I'll go ahead and skip to that and come back, is, uh, hey Jeff and Liam, it's Sam again. Do you think we're gonna get any more villains before the end of X-Aid, like another bugster that manages to take over a host? If so, what bugster would you like to see become a recurring villain? Um, there are only like four bugsters, right? Like five, maybe? There's one for each game, and I'd want to see, um, I don't remember the guy's name, but the the um, Baxo bike bugster, the racing man, uh, Charlie Bugster. Is that? Is I thought name. that was the uh, Geki or the sportsman. Uh, maybe. I think that was Charlie. I don't. the 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 Baxo bike one was named like Bo- Boozer or something dumb that had nothing to do with it. Yeah, that name. yeah, you're right. You're Bra- right. Man. Brango. I don't remember his name. I don't remember I, his name. I want him because he provides an interesting thing. Imagine if just every five episodes it was like, you have to race me. And it was like a new race. Like it's fucking be, race episodes. That'd be awesome. Like one underwater or one like through a construction site or like a, a twist on a race. Every every so often he would appear. I would love that. That would be really cool. Mm-hmm. Man, I want... Uh, I, I'm going to have to agree with Sam. Like, I... I find that our listeners have really good ideas that I have when they ask me a question, and then they give it as an example every time. And then you're like, no, I, f- I fucking thought of it first. Like, he said, personally, I really want to see uh, the bugster for Dangerous Zombie, considering Parrot still has that gashat. Oh, oh, he's asking what we want to see the bugster for that we haven't seen yet. It's, no, what? it's like, what bugster would you like to see become a recurring villain? Oh, and okay. He wants to see the dangerous zombie Gashat have a bugster that becomes a recurring villain. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Es- especially if Dan's actor played him. Oh my god. That would be the coolest shit. Maybe that's how he's gonna come back. Uh, oh, and about that revelation from Graphite, uh, that he has Hero's girlfriend's memories... Oh, yeah, because he killed her, yeah. Yeah, do you think he's seen Hero's scalpel cut through anything more than once? Is that, like, a euphemism? Yes. Do you think, imagine having that, he's like, yeah, I was in Hero's girlfriend, I know all of her memories. There's some I prefer not to think about. (laughs) Some I try to push deep to the, maybe that's why he wants to kill Hero. Maybe. He's just fucking seen too much. 
He sent us a little Japanese comic of, like, Graphite remembering stuff from Hero's girlfriend's <laughs> memory, and, like, them having sex was one of it, and then he wakes up from a horrible nightmare of it. <laughs> Thanks for your emails, and thank you for saving Liam's precious spoilers. Thank you. You helped me. Our next email is from uh, Zombique. Zombique. I like says, that. Hey lovers, got two questions slash comments for you. Okay. I assume that's supposed to be hey lovers. Hey, what? I know you guys talk about how OJ. Uh, I know you guys talk about OJ and the fact he eats shit in the novel, which always cracks me up. Mm-hmm. I'm quite surprised though that you hadn't brought this up with watching Fies. It says, and I quote, the novel was very controversial in the Western common writer fandom due to the dark subject matter of rape. Said rape being inflicted upon Mar- uh, Mari Sonata by Masato Kusaka. Because of this uncomfortable story element, fans in the Western regions have disavowed it as even part of the franchise and have lambasted Toshiki Inoue for writing it. I've actually brought that up like a dozen times. Yeah, we brought that up a couple Every now and again we talk about uh, Kusaka and saying that we call him an attempted rapist. That's because yeah. we know about the Fies novelization. And He's, during the scene, any scene where he interacts with Mari that we talk about, I always talk about how he's a fucking rape man. <laughs> Disgusting rape man. It's not just because he acts rapey in the show, it's because he tried yeah. it in one alternate universe. I think it was a long time ago, like when you first started talking about, like you brought up the uh, fucking um, OJ ate shit. Mm-hmm. And you were talking about how um, uh, Kaido's parents fucking murdered themselves to death and uh, I brought that up then and I think we've mentioned it a few times since but it has been a long time yeah it's been it's been on here but yeah we we are aware of hilarious novelizations I've read some of the Kuga manga that came out also written by Inoue just it came out just last year oh yeah oh boy is that that shit yeah yeah like also, fucking Godai is like some weird ass scene all like a, kid. Yeah, he's like a sort of like trendy punk with weird hair. He's he's it's, kind of a dick. He's, yeah, like he's, a, he is kind of a dick in it. <laughs> it's like Inoue was like, no, no character can be this good. Yeah. He's um, like, like he's he got his grimy meat hooks in Kuga and he's got to ruin everything he touches. Second, why do you think this type of ridiculous shit gets through on a children's show? I understand stuff like Amazon's, but if I was a little Satoshi in Japan, I would be renting out books related to shows from the library like I did as a kid. Then you'd be reading about rape and shit eating. That's, honestly, I have no clue. Maybe I haven't read the books myself. Maybe the context... I don't know how you could fucking present that in any context that's good for kids, though. Because, like, even... Even in, in Ryuki, beyond shit eating, there's the scene with uh, Ren and, and Yui being friends with benefits and fucking in the hospital room. Like that's something that is not for kids. No. Even no. in Japan, where like they get slightly more mature content for kids, that's not for kids. Like fucking on top of your comatose girlfriend is not for children. <laughs> they climb into the hospital bed with her. They gotta move all the equipment and oh shit. Oh my and... god. <laughs> Also, uh, they're called Hiroshis. Little Hiroshis, not Satoshis, yeah. Get it right before you Get it right or pay the price. God, I'm tired of these fake Ryder Club radio fans thinking they know anything. That's all we have, these fake Ryder Club radio fans. Uh, Thanks for answering my question. I'll email back when I feel like correcting you two on all the mistakes you make on the regular. Kisses and hugs, zombie. Team the best part about like all the people who correct us is that it, we're, st- we're not going to correct it. It's, it's <laughs> completely pointless. <laughs> uh, Our next email, oh boy, is from Jake the Snake. Okay, who Long says, writer. "Hey guys, with this week's episode, I really appreciate it. They shed some more light on the fact that Poppy took someone's life to exist, like graphite." Mm-hmm. What's set up at the end really has me pumped for next week. And this isn't related to the episode directly, but I can't believe I didn't notice the details sooner. Even though Dan got a game over, the level 1 Genmu is still on the preview blocks. Is he? Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. And remember, he never got the flowers. Yup. Questions. 
One, if you guys had to work for one of the Heisei organizations like SmartBrain, Zect, Yggdrasil, etc. as a regular employee for a year or two, which would you pick and why? No idea what kind of grunt work it involved, but I'd pick the Kogami Foundation from O's, because at least my boss would be guaranteed to remember my birthday, and maybe I'd get a free cake that day, too. <laughs> There's no maybe about it. You'd get a free cake. Oh, for sure. What about, what would you work for? You'd be a Zect man? No, fuck that. That's extremely dangerous. You work at no Zect, doubt. literally any of your coworkers could be an alien trying to kill you. That's true. You work at Smart Brain. Uh, you have a, a pretty good chance of just getting called into the president's office and murdered to make an example. True. And also, there's an orphanage living beneath. There's a school under. You, you, I don't want to work for Smart Brain. So who uh, do you work for? You work I for me an to show the end of the world's coming. I don't have an answer. Uh, I work for Foundation X because they just don't do anything anymore. Sounds awesome. <laughs> You know what? They probably dissolved and you lose your job if you work for Foundation oh, X. Well, the Foundation X is apparently coming back at some point. It's been teased, so... Oh, that's true. Yeah, in the brave So thing. they're still around. God, I would so, work yeah, for... yeah, I would no. work for Foundation X. I would work for... Oh, my God. Dude, if you want some, like, 100% job security, just work for Heisei's version of, version of Shocker. No matter would, whatever happens, you show up in every fucking crossover forever. That's true. <laughs> I would work for, actually, Genmu Corporation. Yeah. Uh, things seem to, I mean, other than that the one The building time. gets attacked all the time. Here's the thing, though. The, the public, the government cannot shut you down as long as there's a chance that those uh, dead ride players can be brought back. You have job I security. Guess, I guess that's true. So, so you get to just make games all you want. You have to get sexually harassed by Fat Dan every day, though. That's, yeah. I'm sure that I can... The lawsuit will be worth it, eventually. The sure. 60 trillion yen lawsuit. I don't know if you can sue a bugster. I don't know if they're, like, a citizen. You know, I'll use I'll use the bugster from Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, and he'll sue him <laughs> for me. Uh, that's... I would love to see somebody do, like, a series of drawings of, like... Bugsters from real games, what oh, they would yeah. look like. That would be so cool. I mean, the thing is that, like, Bugsters are supposed to be characters from the game, just become real. I guess that's true. Maybe, like, the Bugster for um, Phoenix Wright would be uh, the Steel Edgeworth. Samurai. Oh, Steel Samurai, yeah. <laughs> that may make no sense whatsoever, <laughs> though. Who cares? Just any character. It'd be the judge. Be the, yeah, the idiot judge. <laughs> The surprised ass judge, <laughs> who just—I guess he just hates Phoenix Wright's guts, since he's always trying as hard as he can to undermine him. He's just dumb and really easily swayed. Like yeah. he's the kind of guy who the 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 evidence could be so obvious, but then the prosecutor's like, "Yeah, but what if this happened? That's really unlikely." And he's and like, the judge is like, "Oh my fuck? god, what if that did happen?" Yeah, you might be right, dude. Jesus. Yeah, we're gonna have to keep this trial going for sixteen more days. <laughs> So, all right, I would work for Foundation X, and Liam would work for Genmu Corporation. Yeah. Question two, got any favorites among the bikes slash ride machines in Fies? I'm a fan of Delta's Jet Sliger. Uh, he knows that Fies has one too, but he associates it with Delta more. Well, yeah, the Fies uh, was just a one-off. Yeah, between having missiles as the main weapon, cool design, I end up always remembering its passcode since I think 3821 is supposed to spell out Delta on the phone keypad? I don't think that's true. But Delta's five letters. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Otto Vigen. You like that? I was going to say, like, uh, Kaiser's the most. I think Kaiser's looks dumb. I think I Jet Sliger looks car. dumb, honestly. I like Jet Sliger as well. I, I, do, I like Jet Sliger more than the sidecar bike. I like the sidecar bike. I think Jet Sliger would look fucking awesome, like, rocketing across a desert wasteland. Oh, yeah. But uh, as, it, as it is, it just kind of looks silly, being made out of CG. I like, I like the sidecar bike. I like that it turns into the robot from RoboCop that shoots you. Ed 209. Ed 209. Yeah. It looks like Ed 209 when it turns into combat mode. It kind of does. I like it. But it I looks like, like really terrible Ed 209. <laughs> like awful. Like Ed 209 if he was from a Japanese TV show from 2004. True. Yeah. Um, 
they're, the ones made out of like CG are dumb. I mean, Otto Vigen becomes a CG robot or whatever, but I love the idea that like Fize has a sidekick. Well, he's he's not he's a CG when he changes, but he's when he's actually in the form, he's just a dude in a suit. It's not CG. Yeah, he's, he's the man. Yeah. Yeah, but like I, I love that Fies has a sidekick. Yeah, I think that's the coolest shit. Like sidekicks are super underutilized in Japanese media. Yeah, and I mean he's a sidekick who just opens fire on the hero when he's fighting. But whatever, <laughs> he's still there my favorite. In Betrayed War Genesis, when you go into to a, a level, you pick two guys. You pick a rider, and then you pick an assist. Mm-hmm. And the assist can be any rider, but there's also a number of characters that are just assists, and Otto Vajin is one of them. You can, oh, that's you awesome. Can, you can be Ryuki, and you can bring Otto Vajin in with you, and he'll assist you. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, well, it's a crossover. Nothing makes sense. Yeah. Dental trains. Just, just like the movies. Yeah. <laughs> um, thanks, and looking forward to the next episode, as always, Jake the Snake. Thanks. Our next email... You know what I noticed about Fies while we're talking about Fies logistics? What's, what's that? Takumi has his own phone, but when True. he has the Fies belt, he just uses the Fies phone as a phone. Did he just throw his phone away? He doesn't use the Fies belt as a phone. That's something I specifically took note of because Kusaka does all the time. I, I, I swear to God I've seen him use it at least once as a phone. Maybe. At least but, once he's used it. Maybe. Not I, recently, I, I didn't, like, take uh, stock of that, but, like... I constantly see him use a regular-ass Motorola phone, and fucking Kusaka pulls out this big hunk of plastic <laughs> and flips it open every time he needs to use the phone. What network? Is it on AT&T or Verizon? I don't know. You think SmartBrain would have shut down the fucking cell service by now or something? They're still footing the bill. <laughs> They're like, maybe that's why they want the belts back so bad. They're like, God, they were paying like 60 bucks a month for each of these fucking phones. <laughs> Get it off fucking- of them. Fucking calling long distance to goddamn satellites. <laughs> you know how much it costs to beam down the fucking blaster suit? <laughs> Our next email. GDP, yeah, go. Is from Edgar, who says, Hey, RCR, you guys watched the trailer for that Common Rider laser special? Boy, does x form look like complete diarrhea. I saw x form. He gets like a... It's like a, a it's like a X8 and Giri Giri Chanbara. Yeah. It's oh, like yellow X8. Yeah, it's like X8 with a mustard yellow. Ooh. Anyway, on to my question. Do you guys feel like the proto gashats are being underutilized? I was hoping they would be used as evil riders by the game bugsters, but now they're being used as promos to buy shit I don't wanna. <laughs> Anyways, good podcast as always. Next week will be a fucking doozy. Also, uh, every time he wrote Gashats, he wrote it as Gashits. I'm sure that was on purpose. Okay. Make sure you specify. Uh, I just thought I would specify for everyone. Proto Gashats are dumb. Well, they could have been not dumb. They could have been not dumb if they had actually used them. But yeah, as they are now, they do feel like cheap cash grabs. Like, here, buy Tattle Quest. Now buy Black and White Tattle Quest. Do you feel fulfilled yet? It is re- it is stupid. It's Their entire purpose was to be a collectible item. They appear yeah. in the show, so if it, you want everything from the show, you gotta get it. Barely. The only one that really has any sem- like usage in the show is Proto Mighty Action X, because that's Genmu. But fucking all the others, I mean, they, they get that one scene when Dan opens a suitcase. I think that's the only time you see most of them. I think there was Proto Dragon... Hunter in one episode. Yeah, Dragonite Hunter, like, doesn't Graphite use that one? Yeah, Graphite uses Dragonite Hunter, yeah. Yeah, fucking useless. Useless is what they are. Yeah, I agree. They should have been used more, but even even if they were used in the show, I think they'd still feel like cash grabs to me. Because they're just black and white versions of the regular toys. Oh my god. it's It's so fucking, like... You can't get mad at Toei, right? No, that's just... This is what Toei does. Those lovable scamps trying like, to steal money from kids. They make money. They want their money. Mm-hmm. They want their money back. All that money back. All my money. They want all that money. All that money. In, it's a business. You can't fucking get mad at them, but god damn are they skeevy with this shit. <laughs> That's what they do. 
That's how they be. That's how they I live. Just, I don't... It just makes me not want to buy anything from them, but then they show cool toys, and I'm like, well, I guess I could fucking buy that. Yeah, we're the suckers in the end. Yeah, I, I actually don't buy that much Common Rider merchandise, I realized. Lately, I haven't been buying much either. Like, I... the last thing I bought for myself was uh, the Braves Gachette. Mm. That's that's the last thing I bought. Yeah. And before that, it might it might have honestly been, like, the Gachette I bought for you. Oh, the, the Snipe Bang Bang? Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I'm being honest, if I could find an affordable Fies phone, I'd probably buy it, but it yeah. doesn't exist, so... Yeah, I would, too. I'd Fuck love it. to hear them sounds, press the buttons and hear the sounds. Yeah. Do they they made a CSM Fies driver, didn't they? Just recently, yeah, and if uh, if you are in possession of the modest, modest price of $500, it can be yours on eBay, because it's Jesus not being sold officially anymore. Christ. Yeah. Yeah, I don't... The thing about it is, right, is, like, it would be really awesome to have this type of stuff. Yeah. And I'm sure I could save up enough money for it if I really wanted to. But then I think, like, if I save up a bunch of money and buy, like, a really, like, a new video game system or a new gaming computer, then I can use that for ages. Yeah. And get tons of enjoyment in different ways out of it. If I spend $500 on this belt... I can press buttons and make sounds. It's a for display like a day, piece. A for day or two. More than anything else, yeah. Yeah. That's the only reason why I haven't fucking spent my entire paycheck on something. It's, yet. it's not that I don't have the money, it's that it's not fucking worth $500. Yeah, exactly. It's worth like 60 pay 70 50 or 60 yeah, for something yeah. like that. Hell, if I could find the DX version, I'd get that, but it doesn't exist anymore. No. It wouldn't fit around your bulbous ass adult waist anyway. That's true. That's true. You gotta be a slim, svelte eight year old to be able to fit it correctly. I'm a pretty slim guy, but I'm not a so. whatever fucking fat ass. I'm not a fat ass. <laughs> yeah, whatever, pudgy. Mm. Um, you know what? I feel like we've reached the end of Rider Club Radio episode, whatever number this is. One fourteen, I want to say. And I would like to take this time to thank you, the listener, for putting up with this podcast week after week after week after week after week after week after week. And if you want to thank us for thanking you, you can follow us on Twitter at Rider Club Radio. If you have a fun type question that you would like to ask us about anything, doesn't have to be Common Rider, doesn't even have to be Tokusatsu. It doesn't even have to be Japanese. It can be anything. Ask us our favorite Simpsons episode. Fuck it. It's the Frank Grimes episode. I was going to say monorail. Yeah, it's a good choice, too. Um, Just send us in an email at riderclubradio at gmail.com, and we'll answer it on the air more than likely. (laughs) More than likely. More likely than not. We'll all have a good time. We'll all have a good time together. So that having been said, uh, see you next week. We will see you next week at the same web location. Same ride time, same ride channel. Bye, everybody. Later.